Effie Waller-Smith left little record of her existence. There are no diaries or journals that might allow one to sift through her thoughts and learn about her. There are only her three volumes of verse, her three short stories, and the few poems that she wrote for exclusive literary magazines. All published during an intense 13-year period, these works are the signs of what we might call her literary success and her life. They testified to her desires and ambitions as a creative writer, and yet they remained largely unacknowledged, even by those close to her. She died in total obscurity. As her life story unfolded itself to me, I became aware of just how unfitting this obscurity was for a poet who had once written of the yearning, quote, for an illustrious name, for the applause and praise of men, end quote, and who had indeed found a measure of success in direct competition with the best of America's authors. Even more unfitting is the fact that F.E. Waller Smith, who lived to the ripe age of 80, stopped writing, or in any case stopped publishing, at the age of 38. The Shepherd's Vision Upon the dim Judean hills, the shepherds watched their flock by night. When on their unexpected gaze, outshone that vision of delight. The fairest that did ever rise to all and gladden earthly eyes. From no far realm those shepherds came, treading the pilgrim's weary road. Not theirs the vigil and the fast within the hermit's mean abode. Twas at their usual task they stood when dawned that light of matchless good. Not only to the sage and seer, life's revelation comes in grace, most often on their toiler true, who, working steadfast in his place, looks for the coming of God's will, the glorious vision shineth still. Preparation I have no time for those things now, we say but in the future just a little way. No longer by the ceaseless toil oppressed, I shall have leisure then for thought and rest, when I the debts upon my land have paid, or on foundations firm my business laid. I shall take time for discourse long and sweet with those beloved who round my hearthstone meet. I shall take time on morning still and cool to seek the freshness dim of wood and pool where, calm and hollow by great nature's peace, my life from its hot cares shall find release. I shall take time to think on destiny, of what I was and am and yet shall be, till in the hush my soul may nearer prove to that great soul in whom we live and move. All this I shall do sometime, but not now. The press of business cares will not allow. And thus our life glides on year after year. The promised leisure never comes more near. Perhaps the aim on which we placed our mind is high and its attainment slow to find. Or if we reach the mark that we have set, we still would seek another farther yet. Thus all our youth, our strength, our time go past till death upon the threshold stands at last. And back unto our Maker we must give the life we spent preparing well to live. The Rainbow Love is a rainbow that appears when heaven's sunshine lights earth's tears. All varied colors of the light within its beauteous arch unite. There passion's glowing crimson hue burns near truce rich and deathless blue and jealousy's green lights unfold mid pleasure's tints of flame and gold o oh, dark life's stormy sky would seem if love's clear rainbow did not gleam thanksgiving our father whose unchanging love gives soil and sun and rain we thank thee that the seeds we sowed were planted not in vain. 
but that thy hand the year hath crowned with wealth of fruits and grain. But more we thank thee for the hope which hath our solace been, that when the harvests of our lives have all been gathered in, our weary hearts and toil-worn hands thy welcoming smile shall win. We thank thee for the cheerful board at which fond faces meet, and for the human loves that make our transient years so sweet. We thank thee most for hopes of heaven, where love shall be complete. Though on some dear remembered face no more the hearth lights shine, we thank thee that the friends we loved are kept by love divine. And though they pass beyond our gaze, they do not pass from thine. If at the harvest feast no more, our words and smiles shall blend. We thank thee that, though sundered far, our steps still homeward tend. And that our Father's open door awaits us at the end. My brother, 1882 to 1903. Dead, and he has died so young. Silent lips with song unsung. Still hands with the field untilled. Lofty purpose unfulfilled. Was that life so incomplete? Strong heart that no more shall beat. Ardent brain and glorious eye that seemed meant for tasks so high. But now molder back to earth. Were you all then nothing worth? Could the death dew and the dark quench that soul's unflickering spark? Are its aims so high and just, all entombed here in the dust? Oh, we trust God shall unfold more than earthly eyes behold. And that they whose years were fleet find life's promises complete. Where in lands no gaze hath met, those we grieve for love us yet. Music